Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 24th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Checkpoint Security is writing about research done by Tencent Security about a new Chinese Trojan. Now the Trojan itself isn't really all that new actually. It's called the Swearing Trojan and it's pretty much a mobile banking malware. So what it does is it tries to emulate a legitimate online banking application, but then it tricks the user into entering credentials and forwards them to the miscreants. Typically users infect themselves with these Trojans when they install software they think is benign and it includes these Trojans as an additional payload. But Tencent now observed a somewhat novel way of spreading malware like this swearing Trojan in China and that's by using malicious base transceiver stations or BTSs. Now they're also sometimes referred to as fake cell towers. A lot of attention has been spent on these uh, fake cell towers and it has become easier and cheaper to deploy them. But uh, once a user connects to one of these fake towers, in this particular case, they will send an SMS to user claiming to come from China Telecom and asking them to install this Trojan. Once installed, the malware is behaving like uh, any other malware. It's intercepting passwords. It's also trying to spread itself by sending messages to contacts stored on the phone. But it's certainly surprising that these fake BTSs can reach sufficient coverage to spread a Trojan like this to a level where it does get noticed. As a user, there isn't really all that much you can do about avoiding to connect to one of these fake base stations. So best thing to do is just assume that the network you're connecting to is not trustworthy. And that's probably a good idea and attitude whenever you connect to any kind of internet connection. And well, if you just updated LastPass and you got another update notice, it wasn't fake. Uh, there is yet another bug that Google's Serity initiative found in this popular password wallet. This one sadly is actually an older bug that never was fixed correctly. And the, the way it works essentially is that LastPass, like most password managers, will automatically fill in a username and a password. Now, in this case, an attacker can actually pretend to be a certain domain and trick LastPass into revealing the password for that particular domain to the attacker's website. The bug was originally reported in 2014, was fixed back then, but not fixed correctly, which allowed for this new exploit. If you disabled autofill, then this particular bug is still exploitable via glitch jacking. Now this requires a little bit more work, but Tavis from Google did provide a proof of concept exploit. And security company Cybellum did try to rather aggressively push what they call double agent as a new serial mechanism to launch persistent malware. Well, it uh, turns out that even though there is a name, there is a logo, it's not really all that new and it's not really a vulnerability either. Now, the feature they're exploiting here is uh, the application verifier. Uh, this is a feature that allows you to load an additional DLL whenever you start a piece of software. And uh, this feature was introduced for Visual Studio to be able to load debug libraries and so for binaries where you don't have the source code available. 
So in short, while setting a registry key like this is convenient and not a difficult to do, it doesn't really allow you to elevate privileges or do anything that you wouldn't be able to do without this feature. Now, where it gets a little bit more interesting is when you're doing this to auto start software, in particular to anti-malware software. And this is something that was originally pointed out in 2015 by Alex Ionescu, who pointed out that if you use this feature with anti-malware to load a library that essentially turns off the anti-malware, then you can bypass anti-malware without actually having to uninstall it. So something a user could take advantage of. And that's sort of uh, the little remaining issue here with this particular problem that if antivirus software does not enable the protected process protection layer, then it's possible to essentially turn it off using this feature. And yes, there are still some antivirus softwares out there that do not use this feature. And yesterday I talked about the story where some hacker group claims that they have hundreds of millions of iCloud accounts and are now threatening Apple. Apple confirmed that they have no evidence that these credentials were stolen from iCloud itself. If these credentials are real at all, then they probably came from other sources. On the other hand, it sounds less and less likely that the threat is actually real, also giving the rather modest amount of ransom compared to the number of usernames and passwords that this group claims to own. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.